Colossal Biosciences claims to have done something extraordinary. They say they've brought back the dire wolf, a prehistoric predator that ruled North America for thousands of years, then vanished in the blink of an evolutionary eye. And now it's back, or so they say. But here's the problem. The creature they've engineered? It may look like a dire wolf. It may howl like one. It may even hunt like one. But it's not a dire wolf, not genetically, not behaviorally, not even biologically. Because dire wolves weren't just oversized wolves. They were something older, stronger, more distant on the evolutionary tree than most people realize. And what Colossal is calling a de-extinction might actually be something else entirely, a rebranding. The science community has questions. The genome doesn't match. The methods aren't transparent. And the creature they're unveiling? It's not what we lost, it's something new. So what are we actually creating? A tribute to an extinct predator? A marketing tool? Or the beginning of a trend where memory becomes product? Because the real danger might not be the creature itself. It might be what we're willing to believe it is. We've heard the name, we've seen the memes, we've watched them stalk through fantasy dramas on TV. But the real dire wolf was far more terrifying than fiction. It wasn't a supersized husky, and it wasn't just a bigger gray wolf. It was its own species, Canis dirus, and it walked the earth for nearly 250,000 years. Bigger bones, stronger jaws, a more robust skull. It weighed up to 150 pounds, some even more. Its bite force, strong enough to crush bone and crack through frozen flesh. This was a pack hunter built for survival in the harshest Ice Age conditions. It hunted mammoths, bison, horses, sometimes even each other. Its bones have been found in mass graves, hinting at possible group kills or mass starvation events. And then, just after the Ice Age ended, it vanished. But here's the twist. Despite looking like a wolf, genetically, the dire wolf was completely different. In 2021, scientists published a breakthrough genomic study. They sequenced dire wolf DNA from well-preserved fossils, and what they found shocked everyone. The dire wolf wasn't closely related to gray wolves at all. It had no modern descendants. It didn't interbreed. It had diverged from the common ancestor of wolves millions of years ago. Which means, you can't just tweak a gray wolf's genome and resurrect a dire wolf. Because what we lost wasn't just a predator. It was a lineage. And it's gone. Colossal Biosciences isn't your average biotech company. They've made headlines for one bold promise to bring back extinct species. They're already working on the woolly mammoth, and now they say they've done it again with the dire wolf. At a glance, the creature they've unveiled looks right. Stockier than a wolf, heavier skull, broad shoulders, and teeth big enough to make your skin crawl. But is it a resurrection or a recreation? Colossal claims it used CRISPR-based gene editing on gray wolf embryos inserting carefully selected DNA sequences to create something as close to a dire wolf as modern science allows. But there's a catch. The dire wolf genome was only partially recovered. We don't have a full sequence. We don't have usable cells. And we have no living surrogate even remotely related to a dire wolf. What they've made isn't a clone. It's not even a hybrid. It's a proxy. A new animal designed to look like a legend, a functional replica, part gray wolf, part science fiction, 100% engineered. And yet, they're calling it a de-extinction. To the public, it sounds like the dire wolf is back, alive, hunting, howling. But to evolutionary biologists, it's something far more complicated. Because without the original DNA, without the full instructions. You're not bringing back the past, 
you're manufacturing a myth. To the headlines, it sounds like a miracle. Extinct predator brought back through gene editing. But behind the scenes, in the scientific community, there's a growing unease. Because while Colossal's announcements dominate media, the methodology remains vague. And many experts are asking the same question. Where's the data? We've seen no peer-reviewed studies, no gene maps, no open-source comparisons to the dire wolf genome. What we do have is renderings, press releases, buzzwords. And for scientists trained to live by evidence, that's not enough. One evolutionary biologist called the project more cosplay than conservation. Another described it as biotech theater. Their concern isn't just that it's misleading, it's that it cheapens the science. Because real de-extinction, if it ever becomes possible, will require a complete genome, an accurate epigenetic environment, and a viable surrogate species for gestation. We don't have any of that for dire wolves. The closest modern relatives are jackals and foxes, and even those are millions of years apart. So, Colossal's creature? It may be beautiful, it may be engineered with precision, it may even act like a dire wolf, but it's not one. And by calling it that, we risk blurring the line between what's real and what's marketable. Because if we can rebrand an extinct species with science fiction, what else are we willing to rewrite? To the untrained eye, the new engineered wolf looks convincing. It's big, it's broad, it has thicker fur and wider jaws than a typical gray wolf. But the similarities stop at the surface. Because real dire wolves were built differently. Their bodies were denser, more muscular. Their skulls were broader, with a deeper jaw well adapted for bone-crushing force. Their teeth were larger and better suited for tearing into thick Ice Age carcasses. Most importantly, their DNA didn't match modern wolves at all. Despite the name, dire wolves weren't just wolf variants. They were a separate genus, one that split off from the canine family tree over five million years ago, which means they didn't think the same, they didn't hunt the same, they didn't even communicate the same. Their pack behavior, unknown. Their calls, lost. Their instincts, extinct. What Colossal has created might mimic the form, but it can't replicate the function. Without a full genome, without cellular memory, without the environmental pressures that forged the dire wolf across millennia. This new animal is, at best, a tribute. A body that walks like the past, but thinks like the present. And the danger in that is pretending they're the same. Because when we tell the public the dire wolf is back, we rewrite the past for attention. We replace science with sensation. And we risk creating creatures we think we understand until we don't. We've entered an age where science fiction is catching up to reality. And what once seemed impossible is now marketed as inevitable. But here's the problem. When we bring something back without truly understanding it, we're not restoring nature, we're rewriting it. Colossal isn't cloning the dire wolf, it's fabricating a modern version of it. And that opens up more questions than answers. What happens when the creature doesn't behave as expected? When instincts clash with artificial environments? When public fascination turns into ecological liability, and maybe more unsettling, what happens when private biotech companies can engineer animals? To look like legends? To create species that never truly existed, but sell them as if they did? This isn't Jurassic Park, but it's getting uncomfortably close. Because the dire wolf we knew, the one that walked the Ice Age in blood and frost, that animal had a context, an ecosystem, a reason to exist. What Colossal is building has none of that. It exists in a lab for headlines, for hype. And when memory becomes branding, when extinction becomes aesthetic, we lose more than just truth. 
we lose control. And the next time someone says, we've brought something back, we may not even ask the right question, not, is it real, but, why did we bring it back at all? We remember the dire wolf as a symbol, a ghost of the Ice Age, a predator that vanished before we ever walked its path. But memory has a way of bending, twisting, becoming useful. Colossal didn't find a dire wolf. They built one, a proxy, a replica, a vision of the past, filtered through technology and branding. And now, the myth walks again. Not because we uncovered it, but because we wanted it back. Not for science, but for the story. And maybe that's the most dangerous part. Because the more we play with the past, the more we risk forgetting how final extinction really is. We begin to see it as reversible, optional. Something we can always undo, as long as we have the tech. As long as we have the funding. As long as the press release lands on time. But resurrection isn't the same as restoration. And imitation isn't the same as memory. We didn't bring back the dire wolf. We made something new and gave it an old name. So maybe the question isn't, is it real? Maybe the question is, what else are we willing to forget if it makes the story better?